Today's video is a conversation with John Party, one of my very favorite country artists ever, and his 2019 album, Heartache Medication, was my number one album of that whole year. We just had a kind of sprawling conversation about music and all sorts of stuff, but you really see the way in which he approaches music. It's interesting to get into his head and to see how it's different than someone like me approaches music. I want to say thanks to John and to his manager, Mel, for agreeing to do the interview. I was honored. I want to say thanks to the guys from Country Central for helping to film the interview. We only had a couple tiny little technical glitches, which you will see, uh, but, but they're not bad. Uh, and I want to say thanks to them for letting me use their space and also letting us use their cowboy hats for some little cowboy hat reviews, which you will see. Last piece of housekeeping is just that I want to say... There is new merch. We got Sad Boys merch. We got just doing what we do shirts. And then we also got these prints of the big thicket honky tonk. This is the painting I was working on for most of last year, which you saw. You see this guy in the green right here clinking glasses with Hardy? Uh, that's Mr. Party himself. And so, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Thank you for supporting. That's all at GradySmithShop.com. And that's all. I'm going to let you get on with the video now. Here's a conversation with John Party. Welcome. Hey. Welcome to the channel. All right. Thanks for coming on to the channel. We're here in an Airbnb in uh, Nashville in, you know, on the patio furniture because we roll fancy here. Just keeping it, keeping, it, <laughs> keeping it in the college. I made him sit on the lower chair because he's so much taller than me <laughs> and I appreciate it. Uh, do you remember our first interaction ever? Um, was it about tequila a little time? No. It was long, long ago. It was a tweet. I mean, I'm, I think I've scrubbed my Twitter timeline like eight times since then, but it was after I had a video called Why Country Music Was Awful in 2013. Um, oh, about the girl. Sorry, the song with the girl. Girl, 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 damn pretty girl, girl, you gotta get down. Uh, it was, well, I included clips of Up All Night mm -hmm. in this like big compilation of songs that I said were essentially ruining country music. Uh -huh. um, and you, tweeted something at me that was along the lines of like, I don't think you've actually listened to my music, uh, but like I thought that video was funny or something. Mm -hmm. You're the only artist I ever heard from that was like in that video about it. Yeah. And I was like, huh, he's kind of chill and fun and maybe I should listen to him. And then lo and behold, years later, you're like one of my favorite artists. I mean, <laughs> hey. at, yeah. At, at the time, at, you know, up on that was, you know, we came from Missing You Crazy, just kind of had a big kind of wailing sound to it. And, and then the Florida Georgia Line blew up. And like, I had Up All Night in my pocket and it kept me in the game for that album, you know? And, and cause it, it would had the tracks and everything and everything changed after Cruise. I mean, everything. Every, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, then, I mean, that's when the, the computers and everything came, became a part of country music. Mm -hmm. It's not even, it's like, it's a part where it's just what we do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we're going to have loop sounds or we're going to have natural sounds. And, um, but Up All Night was definitely that just had a good feel. We still play it. I mean, it's, it's always been a fun song. Yeah. I mean, I think at the time I had, it's funny things that seem really important when you're 23 that mm -hmm. don't seem really important when you're 33. And man, a decade ago. I would have died on the hill of like the sanctity of country music. <laughs> and now I have like a much more, I think, kind of like nuanced or patient opinion about it. I'm not so uh, concerned, but uh, it's, it's just funny because I was, I was, I'm willing to say on camera to you, I was wrong about you um, because I think you've proven, I like you so much because you're like a, a good solution for the problem of country forgetting its roots but also needing to have like some progression and needing to still feel current and modern yeah no i mean i've always wanted to be modern and be played on the radio so um that's always the goal yeah you know all right well i want to that, that, that's that, we'll, we'll get back to that but i want to go to your like earlier days been researching you for like a week now okay um so dixon california yeah what is that town like that's where you're from uh, it's just, it's kind of a commuter farm town close to the Bay Area, California, and it's pretty simple. It's getting a lot bigger now. Like the places we used to go party in high school and like go buy a tree and, you know, <laughs> and get beer where we can. Like there's houses there now. And I always, I always say like, <laughs> you know, 
I sound like my parents, like, bye, I'm going to see her. This was a field, you know. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely a, a fun town. And, and um, went to high school there, always had a band, played some, you know, keg parties. And uh, just, Have you been to the world record cor corn maze? Um, that is now, uh, its home is in Dixon. Oh, I know. It's got the world Guinness Book of Records. Um, no, I, I have not. I, I'm never in, by October, we're like touring somewhere. And mm -hmm. like, the last thing I want to do in October is go to a corn maze in Dixon. <laughs> I'd rather go down to the local bar and say, like, okay. hi, everybody. <laughs> what brought your family to California originally? Uh, well, less you're going way deep. My dad's, my dad's family were farmers, and they moved to Dixon. I don't know where, but they're definitely um, Italian-Swiss background, and they just started farming in Dixon. I think probably, probably after you know, the Dust Bowl when everybody came out. You know, I think they brought everybody out. It, I don't know that deep. Yeah, I know that was they moved to farm. Yeah, and. I mean, back in the day, though, to move to California, and that's like hitting gold. If you think about it, the generations of farmers that have that story of, like, I've been in this land forever. And, um, my family came here and did this. So they were, were farming background. And my mom's mom uh, married a Air Force man. Okay. And then that's how she ended up in Winters, California, which is like nine miles from Dixon. And he was at Travis Air Force Base, but then they got divorced, and then she married a farmer, and like God, it's the, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So this is California is very diverse of yeah. farming, construction, schools, nurses, medical around like around Dixon's UC Davis is very close, and they have great medical. So there's all different things that go on back home. Did you? I mean, you pulled up in a big old muddy truck and you're always moving crap and I don't know what you do. I'm just like, I don't know if you have like a big sandbox that's of a property. Small, that's my small truck. That's your small truck? <laughs> uh, are, I mean, does, were you farming growing up or do you just like need to move things around on land for some reason? Uh, no, I grew up running equipment and, you know, I, I ran farm equipment and just kind of been the operator and learning stuff and just helped my friends out and their family and just kind of took everything in. And, mm -hmm. and, but that and, wasn't, you weren't on a farm yourself. No, I lived in, um, we lived in a, like a nice neighborhood. Yeah. But I mean, even at the time, like California farm property, you just, you're, you're blessed to have that. You're blessed to have acreage because it's not like you got to make a lot of money to go buy farmland in California. Like a lot of the farmers are trying to look out here and I'm trying to tell them like, you got the best farmland. You're not gonna, you're not gonna farm in Tennessee. Like you cannot put almonds out here. It rains too That's much. That's what they grow. Yeah, uh, everybody's moving the almonds and olives, and uh, they're still hay, still hay farmers. And and then you, you just got I don't know. It's it's so diverse out there. And I'm not too. I mean, I'm in country world now. So yeah. It's just you know that's a different discussion for like, like my dad or. My grandma knows all about it. <laughs> so, um, but it's it's a it's a good farm farm in town, and uh, it's just a good area. The NorCal all the way up, you'd be it's like billions of dollars yeah. of, of agriculture, and not too many people know that. Choose a number between ten and twenty. Seventeen. Seventeen. When you were seventeen. On a, on a random Tuesday in mid-May, take me back all those years ago of like, what would a Tuesday in May have looked like when you were 17? What would you have been up to today? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> well, I was having my truck, so I was driving around. Okay, that was your first car? Yeah. What was it? It was a Ford F-150 two-wheel drive, because <laughs> my dad wouldn't let me get a four by four, which is probably good. <laughs> Um, probably cruising around, um, I think 17. You'd be in school still, right? Yeah, no, we were in high school. I'd be in high school. Did you play sports? Yeah, I'm trying to think when I got, I got hurt junior year, so that would be 16, 17. I, boom, I hate it. I wasn't good at sports, but I like <laughs> playing sports. Okay. It taught me the game. Uh-huh. You know, but I never, I was always playing music, you know. I was really, at 17, I was really into Blink-182 and, like, Green Day and all that stuff that was really huge at the time. And I loved country music. I've been singing country my whole life. And, like, 
But for, for some reason in high school, I was just like, oh, I'm not country anymore. You know, <laughs> I like this Blink-182. You room. have to. It's Let's a part run around her underwear. You know? Like. <laughs> That's part of being a country fan. You got to go through, like, it's like the rum springer that Amish people have to do. Or you have to take college away and be like, no, that's pedestrian. Yeah. And I don't listen to country. And then you come back around. Well, I still, I still listen to country all the time. That you couldn't, I could not listen to. But I love the high energy of, you know, the pop punk. And, and I, I always say a, a lot of... Uh, the songwriting influences that I bring to the songwriting table is high energy country and catchy, you know, and I learned a lot of like from that and Green Day and like songs that mm -hmm. when you still hear, you still get that same feeling. Like, and I watched the, the Tom DeLonge, he, he did like a little three episode thing where he like went to the studio and talked about the Blink-182 sound. He's like, we're just writing lullabies that, you know, he was just talking about how we're making super catchy, fun punk music. Mm. I was like, we're just making super, super fun country, catchy music with probably a little better lyrics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. It's it's pretty funny when I think about like the pop punk influences and stuff. Were you playing? So I, I read a lot in a lot of your early early interviews and kind of press releases and stuff. It references this band in college called Northern Comfort. Yeah, I tried so hard to find footage or something of it, um, but. It, you said it a lot I'll send of times. You a had, CD. I still have CDs. I would love that. Send a picture so I can, you know, make this part of your mythos. Um, you I can, can figure. I can find a, a photo. But the uh, did y'all play like Blink and stuff? Because you no. Okay. No, okay. We, that, after high school, I graduated and was lost. Basically, my parents got divorced right at eighteen, um, which is like it's hard. And I, I know and everybody's been through divorce or or. Or not been, but like when you're 18 is even more harder because mm. you didn't grow up with your parents separated. And you probably wonder like, so were they just waiting for me to move out? Nah, I think my dad was, but you know what? It's <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but it's all good now. I'm, I'm very close with both my parents. I love them and, and everything is fine. But when you're 18, you're like, what do I do? My dad's like, go to work, you know? And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go to college, but I don't have the grades and I don't want to play music. But I moved in, I, oh, sorry. I visited Nashville when I was 18 with a friend and we had a blast, but we couldn't get into bars. Mm -hmm. And that was a big thing. And like, that's kind of what you do here. And was the, there wasn't like quite the infrastructure of like Broadway that there is now, right? A little bit, but no, we okay. weren't, we were at like, where it was a tin roof, we couldn't get to tin roof. <laughs> and then there was like the best Western back in the day. Oh yeah. That a lot of songwriters had, the, you, we'd go watch around and, and when I was 18, like I didn't, I didn't know anything. We were just, we just were here for the weekend. But I was like, after that, I, I'm gonna move to Nashville. I told everybody, moving to Nashville. So finding my way, I ended up in Chico, California. Going to Butte College, that's a, a junior college of Chico State, which is all great, great schools, but it's a, a party school. Mm -hmm. And well, I was, you know, I, sit, I was sitting in the hot tub after the gym. I like to go swim, like laps. I was just sitting in the hot tub, and this guy had uh, F-holes on his bicep. He was, like, jacked. And he was like, yeah, I play mandolin and guitar. <laughs> and, like, literally sat, and then we, we got together, and, and I jammed some of the songs I've been writing. And then we met a bass player, and then I met a fiddle player in the laundry room. And then we found a drummer, and then we, we went, instead of Southern Comfort, mm -hmm. we went Northern Comfort. Mm -hmm. And pretty much from 19 to 22, I played Northern Comfort of somewhat and uh, we made an album at Chico State because we had a band and there was a audio engineering class that you could take a band and record it. So we, we basically hit any student that wanted a country country song. So mm -hmm. we, we went and recorded it with them. So it, it sounds pretty, it sounds okay, but it's, it's that raw kind of just, this is me doing it. Yeah. And it was fun. I wrote, all, I wrote, you know, I wrote all the songs except two. One was an instrumental, and then I co-wrote one with a guitar player for a DUI contest, and it's called a DUI song. A DUI contest? Yeah, it was it was like, a songwriting contest. <laughs> not not that that doesn't sound right. I was like, <laughs> what is is it to like prevent drunk driving? What is the? Uh... Yes, it was. <laughs> it's called prevent. You know, it was basically like make a jingle that tells your friends not to drink and drive. Okay. So we did, but it was really good. Wow. And, um, 
It was our biggest song we played at the end of the night. And we had some other songs. Really? Was really. it like... Summer of 03 by myself. Fun? Or, or was it like sad? Oh or my God. It's a honky-tonk ripper. Oh, it's fun. Yo, it's too fun because they played it on the radio, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. <laughs> they kind of were like, this is not... This is too fun. But I was like, but at the bar at 2 a.m., it might, re it might re remind somebody, like, hey, maybe I shouldn't drive home. <laughs> Dude, I'm so, okay, so I didn't drink till I was 21. Mm. I was such a goody two shoes. Uh, but I managed to get two different times, just be in the wrong place at the wrong time with a group of people. I got two minor in possessions mm. um, within a one year span and became a young offender in the state of Virginia. Um, and I had to do classes, I had to like pay fines. And oh, I became, definitely had plenty of. Minor in possession, <laughs> trust me. But, but mine were. <laughs> I've definitely, definitely cleaned up some offices. And well, some, did some school. <laughs> I would have been less salty about it if I had deserved them, but I was like, I remember there was an officer one time. I got kicked out of a hotel lobby. It was like a high school reunion football game, and the officer was like, if you've not had anything to drink, why are your eyes so red? And I was like, because I'm crying. Um, I'm getting kicked out, and I didn't even do anything. And, uh, and so I. Uh, yeah, I ended up becoming my first original like activist cause was I was super into this concept of like choose responsibility uh, and let's move the drinking age to 18. And all my <laughs> friends were like, you could just like drink. And I'm like, no, um, I'm going to follow the law. But anyway, my, I got one in Chico and there was a front yard party and we're all partying <laughs> and like literally my ass was on the sidewalk. And then the officer was like, hey, man, you're on the sidewalk. Here you go, you know, write a ticket, but I do, you do the classes mm -hmm, and you know, mm -hmm. kind of do whatever community service and it's not on my record. But. Speaking of alcohol, a, a, a quote that's come up in a lot of interviews I've read of yours is something to the effect of, uh, I learned in college that sad songs don't sell beer necessarily. No. Nope. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about that? Because it kind of helped me understand you a little bit as like sort of I, I try to think kind of what is the meta narrative that an artist is giving the world and I'm like you know in some ways you are like the king of a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down you make fairly traditional country music but it's so fun and it's got a beat and it's kind of you you almost like secretly dose it in there and so I guess I've just kind of been thinking of you in that framework well back in Northern Comfort and even playing around you know we had to compete with rap and, and at the time Rap was, I still think it's one of the best, like, early 2000s. Like, it was all about dancing. Mm -hmm. You know, at the, when did 50 Cent come out? It got to be, like, 2000. I mean, it was still, like, but it was just, you know, it's different than what it is now. Back then, it was like, yeah, we're going to dance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, yeah. dance all over this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and so you got to, country wasn't, like, really like that at the time. But we just kind of made our way and we were just rowdy and everything was upbeat. Um, we played maybe one or two slow songs and it was always at the end of the night, you know, like got them through partying and um, I just always kind of say that like, I don't go to a concert to cry. Mm. And that's never been the, why I would go to a concert. Now Adele would probably be a little different, but but and that's when the wives come in. I mean, I mean, Celine Dion was amazing. I saw her in Nashville, and I was, I was blown away. <laughs> I mean, I, I might have cried. I don't know. But uh, for me, it was like, I don't know. Just want to have fun. And I want my fans to have fun. I want them to come back, and I want them to, you know, always back. I want to go see them every time because it's fun, and I love that music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so kind of having that energy. And, like, my ballad really is like she ain't in it. And I don't really have a, a lot of slow songs. And if they are slower, no. I love. I mean, I love. Don't blame it on whiskey. Yeah, don't blame it on the whiskey. But still, that's not a really. It's. I don't know what the BPM, but it, it, to me, that's not a slow song. Okay, so sorry. I take it all back. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's an upbeat banger. Um, <laughs> but uh, man, it's that's... definitely calmer. Yeah. Let's put it that way. It's calmer. Yeah. So uh, I guess it's slow. I don't know. Dude, I've, I've seen some of your videos of when you, like, I love the song, uh, It's All Coming Back to Me Now by mm -hmm. Celine Dion. Oh, yeah. Slash, I love the music video with, like, her, the ghost. Piano um, slam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it's a classic. And I know you're a fan of it, too. Okay. It, your, your kind of breakout wasn't, like, the smooth takeoff that 
uh, I think it's easy to think of artists when they get to your level of like, oh man, he just blew up when that for when Up All Night happened. But mm. it, it was interesting, kind of like looking back through your discography, being like, man, some of these you had all those songs on Write You a Song, um, with the exception of Up All Night, kind of like struggled on on radio. They did fine, um, but they didn't become like top 10 smashes that kind of got your name out there. What was it like kind of, you came here in 08, you're, I mean, I read a lot about you lifeguarding and, and stuff like that, which fascinates me. Um, That's but fun. did you have a good, did you condescendingly twirl your whistle? No, okay. no, I was with kids. <laughs> oh, okay. At, like the Y? No, I was at a private school called St. Bernard's. Why do they need a lifeguard for this one? They had a pool. They had a pool and it was over the summertime, so they had summer school. Mm -hmm. This is basically, you know, we kept, we kept the kids while the parents had to go to work. You know, they bring them to summer school <laughs> or after, after school programs and, and so they can go to work and still have a place to take care of the kids. Get to the private school. Are you still a lap swimmer? Because you mentioned that back in... I would like to get back into it. I just haven't done it. You're probably built for it. Yeah, no, I should have been a swimmer, I, but... I remember a teacher in high school, he's always like, you should have been a swimmer. I was like, I like football. I think he's like, but you're not that good at football. I was like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, I just enjoy swimming and the breathing and, and, and it's, it's all emotion and I don't know. It's a really hard workout, let's put it that way. It's the number one sport uh, where people get dehydrated because they don't realize how much they're yeah. sweating. They feel like it's cool. Or yeah. Not, you know, I'm not hot. But no, it's it's definitely a workout. Uh, so, so I brought that up randomly to say like, okay, so you're a natural couple years. I passed the lifeguard test for the YMCA, okay? I believe I it. I did it. I did it. Dude, I had my three-year certification. I had to be, <laughs> I had to be the... I had to be the for camp for summer camp and I was always the lifeguard at this thing called family weekend where they would let the kids like parents come for uh, the last little session and dad's believing that they still have the strength to do the blob uh, you wow. know one of those big things where you like jump off yeah I had that was like 90% of my job was just being like sir it hurts a lot more than you remember it like <laughs> it's different when you're, you're 50. a little heavier um yeah <laughs> like and they so many of them tweak their back and it was just I was like well I'm powerless here hopefully you don't drown uh wow but uh anyway you were I think when I think of your story you're here you're working some jobs it didn't take you too long to like get some attention and, and get a record deal but I think a lot of people, and definitely myself in the past, would think that a record deal just is an automatic ticket to like, okay, now you're going to take off. And so what I was saying is kind of like that, that initial couple years wasn't, wasn't just this take off and suddenly you're this big number one hit maker every time. Was that surprising to you? No. Okay. No. I was told it at my label that I was going to be a marathon, not, not a race, you know, and, but they, they love everything I did because of you or because that's just how it is because of the sound okay the traditional sound the different like the and at the time like the long hair I had, you know Eric had long hair everybody was like you had like the shaggy Thomas Rhett kind of yeah cut. Thomas had it yeah I mean I looked like a mop I had horrible <laughs> long hair um and it was just you know wild the songs were really high energy and and traditional and um but they were good, you know? They, I mean, hell, Write You a Song went gold, like, last yeah. year, which is a huge deal to me because, like you said, you think a record deal, you're going to get it. Well, or also, your first record usually doesn't go gold either, you know, unless mm -hmm. you just blow up. Um, but my label is still, to the day, you know, part, we're always on the marathon. Just They just knew what, for me, looking back, they knew I was different than what I, I knew. I just did me. That's what, the way I looked at getting record deal. Well, I'm going to do me because nobody else is cutting my songs. And that's kind of what that came about. And um, after the success of Ryu's song, the record, the main success of Ryu's song for me was I could sell out clubs. And they'd listen to the whole, the whole record and sing the, you know, I mean, when I've been drinking, we thought when I've been drinking was going to be a number one because mm -hmm. they had the crowds, they would sing it and then shout it back. And that, that was like 38. What I can't put down died at 33. Um, <laughs> you remember all these. Yeah. Beast New Crazy <laughs> died around to 23. Um, and then up when I went to 10, but when you got the top 10, we'd put the record out. 
So we all we had, you know, not that they were failures in radio. I always say this about radio: if you if it gets played, somebody's gonna hear it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna hear it, regardless of what it gets to. Somebody heard it, and you got to go from there and build and build and build. Well, I went back, and I was like, oh, you know, we got real fired up. Toured with Alan Jackson over 2015, and between like 2000, 2013 to 2015, we made California Sunrise. Mm -hmm. And head over, I was blown away when they were like, head over boots, give me the, the first single off next record. I was like, that is the country. Like, we were going backwards. Cause you're the one I want, you're the one I need. Uh, very light. <laughs> but, I mean, the crews and, and the whole what they would say bro country at the time and it's like it was just a time for a hero you know mm -hmm. but we still had we still had a, a like a slap track in it and just a little bit of programming mm -hmm. i mean like maybe seven percent but we still have it when we play live we have that one little drum loop because it adds so much to that song and it's just that familiar sound when i say bringing com computers are now here to stay because it's got that familiarity mm -hmm. like it's it's like you listen to all the new stuff that's banger and like it's just like killing it's i mean it's post malone world now mm -hmm. and so just i'm just i just gotta use the tools that you get that, that you know it's in some way given. i'm the snapchat guy so like i and, and sometimes i'm like okay i just have to maintain my well, we didn't do a snap we did i just slap track okay just, okay sorry like but, a wooden it's kind of wooden stick it sounds really <laughs> cool i i love the i love it on uh whatever you have on heartache on the dance floor that yeah. same like that's that's a, a clap that's a, a like a clap but we put some secret ingredients in it i'm not gonna uh, let that go because <laughs> we still do that we still got that i won't put that well there's something about it that feels a little less that feels a lot less uh we, we, synthetic we went for that because yeah. i was like man we can't just have the the regular clap it's got so we got to mix in a bunch of stuff with it then we do that a lot because that one snare hit on on top of whatever track is is so groovy well i mean and it's nothing that hasn't been done before i mean if you listen to tulsa time by don williams there's there's a guy going like this with that and motown and i mean motown i've, I've toured motown three times and you i've done the click where mm -hmm. they got a little square reverb up in there so it ain't nothing new we just use the computers now well i was gonna say like <laughs> i think part of looking into you know the word Bakersfield comes up a lot just, I think, because of your sound and also from being from California. And in a way, it's exactly like what you're describing of being like, no, there's an energy in that and the crowds like it was the original kind of rebellion of Bakersfield was mm -hmm. being like, look, Nashville has gotten so like glossy and smooth with all of their orchestral backings. Let's add some energy and a little bit of a rock backbone. Loud guitars. And and like it's, I don't know, it just kind of stretched me even thinking about this interview being like, you know what, it, in some ways what you're saying, this is the modern version of that. I never even thought about Bakersfield until I learned about Bakersfield and the California sound. Because I was just in the California scene. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I wasn't aware about it. I didn't want to learn. I was like, so you didn't come here on a mission being like, I'm a missionary of like yeah, a just, Western I just sound. wanted to be liked. <laughs> like I, and like the first thing you need, well, you California, you don't know about, no, you don't know nothing about country music. Well, you don't know nothing about California. That's what <laughs> I tell people. And, and it was just, and then the thing was like, I forget when they had to exhibit and it was a it was an awesome exhibit. It was at the Country Music Hall of Fame. It was Bakersfield Sound, and it was awesome. I was like, there was Buck, there was Merle, and all the songwriters. And just like, I was like, wow, I didn't even know that I was doing something similar. <laughs> I was just doing it, and that's yeah. what they were doing. And then yeah. even when the Bakersfield Sound came out, like it was, you know, it had a lot of pushback. Like, I don't know if you know they had start like Buck and Merle. The, mm -hmm. I've been told started the ACMs just because they never got to be a part of CMAs, mm -hmm. and so. But now it's just funny. I, mean, I don't know how much of that is true, but it's just kind of funny to to kind of even say like, damn. Well, you know what? People are always getting pushed back, no matter what genre, no matter what year it is. It's just like stuff we all go through and, and laugh about it one day. And it's funny that there probably is something that is like subconscious that we can't even detect regionally that like forever shapes Californians to maybe be a little bit more amenable to, to like, let's get people dancing. Maybe I, still, I still say West Coast is one of the wildest 
wildest crowds out there. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, every time we go back, the weather's great, the fans are great, the food's great, everything's great. When that album blew up, we were talking about California Sunrise, and that really, like, I mean, just head over boots, right into dirt in my boots, and then you had stuff like, I mean, what you rounded out with Night Shift, like, it was just mm -hmm. such a, a big album. Did you do well with, like, getting famous? I still don't consider myself famous. Okay. I mean, I still go, I mean, I, I maybe I don't see it, but I still go to Track Supply, I still go to Home Depot. Still sitting, on, like this. still sitting on a, a patio. A piece I'll put it like this, and uh, people just be walk by me, and, and I'm like, I don't care. I don't, I'm usually usually a little dirtier, mm -hmm. but I, I don't really consider being famous. I me, mean, I'm like country famous, let's put it that way. Uh huh. So I mean, at a concert though, you got a thousand people. A yeah. Thousand oh people. yeah. I mean, like we did stagecoach. I came out and I was like, yeah. But you're not an overthinker like that. You're not like, oh no, this means that like. They don't see that I'm an imposter and I don't deserve this. You don't go through all that kind of uh, obsessive <laughs> self-loathing. A lot do. I uh, only thing I gotta do with is anxiety and <laughs> and trying to just be the best I can. Uh -huh. and I think that's that's the hardest part. The fame and everything will come, and it'll get worse and worse. But what'd you sign up for? I mean, yeah. what, you know, I, I want to make people happy with music. If that makes you happy and you want to get a photo of me, if I got a little bit of time, I'll try, you know? Mm -hmm. But just being famous does get in the way sometimes, but it's not a big deal. Well, good. But not yet. Not yet. That's like the healthy, that's like one of the healthier perspectives I've ever heard. I'm just like, wow, I want to be in your head a little and not overthink everything. Yeah. Um, I, I'd rather just, you know, you, they like your music. Remember that. And regardless of how tough it is at the time, and you always got, I do have a swift exit, though. I got a driver, Ernie, shout out to Ernie, and he I can call him and we can go out. That back door, remember where the back door is, <laughs> front door. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a quick exit. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one thing I do. <laughs> when you're done, you're done. Well, no, I just there comes time, like, you know, people people wanna get on your skin, especially in Nashville. Like some guy called me last month a wannabe country singer. I heard you just a wannabe country singer. I was like, Motherfucker. <laughs> I am not getting in a bar fight tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like there's a lot of there's a lot of like things that you got you can get trapped in. You yeah. know, I don't know. I mean I don't want to see Luke Combs going through that, but there's just different tiers. Yeah. There's always something different for some other artists and I don't know. Yeah. The uh speaking of California Sunrise, especially in the heartache medication, something that does feel very intentional. It, it, it feels like you want to make the fiddle cool again. And it feels like you kind of have. Um, was this intentional or was it just like, I think what, what's your, you had a few singles that just opened with a fiddle line. And I remember yeah. just being really, definitely on heartache medication. Mm -hmm. I think she ain't in it. Like I was like, man, these are starting with a fiddle line. And I didn't realize how much I hadn't heard that until I did hear it again. I think that all comes from my, my influence from from uh, George Strait and Alan Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, if you listen to some of their biggest songs, it kicks off with a fiddle. Uh, there's always twins. You know, you got uh, Living on Love, mm -hmm. Amarillo by Morning, mm -hmm. Full Heart and Memory, mm -hmm. uh, Tall Tall Trees. I mean, Alan had so much presence in a fiddle, and and Northern Comfort had a fiddle. And, we, and I learned a lot about bluegrass in Northern Comfort, minor chords, and, and things that I had was just didn't really know about. I was coming out of the, you know, little wannabe pop punk band and, and singing, you know, Sweet Alabama and Tom Petty. I learned so much, so much from going out of country that bring back to country. But mm -hmm. like, there's pictures of me when I'm seven, I'm just like decked out, you know. <laughs> I would, I, there, if you, and what? Gar, my, so Like merch? <laughs> no. My grandmother's, she's great with sewing and she made me so many Garth Brooks shirts. Like, how but, does one make it? Make a Garth Brooks she, shirt? I didn't know that. That I don't know how she did it. I don't know. She just sewed it together. <laughs> like ironed it on. No, like she, she sewed bought. it. Now she handmade this shirt. I'll never forget. It was the what was the album that Garth had? He had the white and black checkered shirt. Um, it was not No Fences or Rope in the Wind. It's not Rope in the Wind. It's that's blue. 
Uh, I don't know. It's probably like Double Live or something. No, no, it was an album. Well, he, he had that shirt, and she made me one. I don't mm-hmm. know if you get because I think I was singing some contest, but this was like, I was like eight or nine. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I had me a Garth Brooks shirt on. Uh, big Garth fan. Big, big Garth fan. I think we all were. I mean, he was just like a huge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, and he had fiddle. I mean, I think about Garth, Beach of Cheyenne. Mm hmm. Working on Full House. I mean, mm-hmm. there was that. To me, I, what I say to about influences, I thought fiddle was a part of country music. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I never thought it went away. Well, but. it's. A, I think it's underutilized too because every concert you go to, like I, I see Flatland Cavalry live all the time. I love them. It's such a show stopping, like reliable moment to have it's the a fiddle battle player. weapon. Yeah, it's not a battle weapon. It's a battle instrument. It's a battle weapon. <laughs> But like you know, like there's stories of Davy Crockett that he had a fiddle uh-huh. and he played it to like everybody. The the you know I don't know. It's, there's 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 a lot of and if you talk to a fiddle player, their their fiddle or violin is literally from like the 1800s. <laughs> Every single one of them. It's been around forever. Like the Irish fighting songs. It's a very in your face kind of instrument. And if you you saw on it, it's just like it pumps you up. But was Colin there- Baton Rouge? They just made a damn earthquake happen in Louisiana with the fiddle yeah, intro. I heard that. I heard that. I mean, I'm just saying there's something to it. So was it was it a thought though? Like I want, I want my singles to have this prominently, or was it just there? No, it was always there because that picture you said you told me. Yeah. From 2010, we all had the same shirt on. Billy plays fiddle. Mm-hmm. He was in there playing fiddle with us, even in the van. I love the production on your records. Um, I love that there's fiddle on them. I think you and Bart are clearly a good team. These new ones have Ryan Gore on them as well. Yeah, Ryan's been with us the whole time. Okay. We just we just wanted to give him a little more credit because I was like, man, you know, uh, we can't lose Ryan. <laughs> I was kind of like, like he he's our you know he's our engineer and he's it so much and and he's he grew as an engineer and as a producer and as a song guy too, because he, he started, you know, after, after we hired him full time for the first record, they start, he did a couple of Casey Musgraves record. Mm-hmm. Then he did a couple old dominion records mm-hmm. and he started to work with more artists to where he had more of inputs and stuff. So yeah. I was like, man, it'd be, be good to have Ryan as some production credit on that. And that was my idea. And, and we we just kind of been rolling like that ever since because I feel like it's just, you know, a team. Well, I love when – I mean, there was a – what was it recently? I was listening to Dylan Carmichael's record last year. Mm. And I was just like, man, I love how this sounds. And I, like, clicked it. I, I'm, I'm the king of show credits on mm. Spotify. Love that feature. And I was just like, party produced this? I was, yeah. I was so confused. Me and Ryan. Yeah. And I think I didn't – I think in my mind, like, Bart – Produced everything. Um, I didn't really realize you're a, a studio guy too. I look. I don't want to be a producer, but I want to make great music. That makes sense. So if I if I really believe in something, I thought Dylan has a great voice, and I think he just. I came in there and really kind of helped handpick songs that I believed in from his song. Like he has. He has a song "Big Truck" that I still. I wanted that to be the first thing. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is. It's got it all, man. And they're like, no. Nah. Now I, I talk to them today. He's like, there's testing real good. I was like, I bet it is. <laughs> but I, I'm good with songs that I believe in or what I think is a good song. And and I owe that a lot to Bart because Bart was a song plugger for a while. And then he wanted to be a producer. And um, he, he really just brings these excellent songs. If What makes a song great? Like, what what is it like that you're hearing when you hear a new truck that you're like, that is? Well, big trucks. Like it's fun, it's kind of funny, it's got a great beat. It reminds me of just like just a. I think when that you put that, if you play that in Texas, everybody would be dancing. You play it anywhere, everybody would be dancing. Is that what you it's kind of, a you bit kind of, of imagine? What will people do if they hear this live? Yeah, I mean, when I think of uh, hearing a sad song or something, or I hear I hear a song about a bar and neon lights. My ass is in my mind. I'm at losers. I'm at losers, and I'm sitting at the bar and I'm listening to this song. And it's got to have the bar test. It's got to have the windows down test. And it's got to have the mowing test. You got to be able, I don't care what size your lawn is. You at least got to have a good mow test. Some of your earliest Instagrams are of lawnmowers. Um, 
do you like i asked this a little bit earlier like are you just like really into yard work what do you like what you the other day your manager said i think he's on the tractor so i don't know if, what time he can come in what are you doing well i bought this 40 acres and we timbered it and i'm picking up the slash piles and piling them up and burning them okay and then i go back and grade it and make it look nice and then we're planting grass Okay. I'm like, literally don't have time to do anything but that. But okay. I'm just trying to get it set up to where it's real pretty and go mow and just kind of cruise around. Is but, it like, were you looking for some kind of really ground after touring a lot? Like I, I would imagine, I see a lot of country artists get very into more kind of not primal, but just sort of earthbound tangible activities because I'm like, maybe it's really therapeutic or something from being on the road all the time to just have something so grounded. Man, I, I grew. I always had jobs since I was fifteen, mm -hmm. and I say this about projects. I don't care, you know, what it is. Like, let's let's build something. You always see the finish, and in music, you don't. You never see the finished product because you put an album out. Okay, yeah, hopefully everybody likes it. I mean, you get acclimated and stuff, but what do you gotta do next? You gotta go back and restart the whole deal, mm -hmm. and you, you definitely move on from a project but at that that time and day when you finish record do you know what it's gonna do yeah but i know what this whatever the hell we just built is gonna do it's gonna we build a deck we're gonna have beers on this this is gonna be awesome <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like it's very finite and so i just there's a lot of i guess i don't know if i make excuses that but i just love running equipment i grew up doing it and i got five cows and five goats four cats and four dogs which is pretty the cats came along for the mice uh what do you do with all these animals like do they just roam are the cats like wild or are they like no they're are... in the shop but their asses might be kicked out of here in a little bit but <laughs> they kill all the but i mean they, have you ever seen a cat mess with anything no uh -oh, they're well either they're very curious or they're very they're like, decisively what? brutal what? Yeah. yeah i mean the they've killed birds and all kind of stuff so i kind of call them my lions you know like they're out there out there just eating stuff <laughs> but the cows are they're highlanders scottish highlanders and they're fuzzy and they're they're just kind of pasture ornaments mm -hmm. and then i don't know if you've been around goats goats are very uh loud and dumb no no i got pygmies <laughs> okay, okay they're pretty loud but they're funny they're like endless entertainment that was, one friend described goats as endless entertainment and it's been pretty funny so it's just nice to go see farm animals and and you know, are, they I don't have time up, to, are they just clearing up the brush? Is that what the goats are for? Oh, man. They they, just eat, they, eat, the eat, fences eat, eat. are nice. Yeah. I can, it's easier to fix the fences. And uh, it's just always got a project for me. And then uh, along with songwriting and, and everything. So that's just cool. I mean, it's just like it's interesting to me. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's, it's fun. Yeah. I got a head gate. Put them through there. You know, we got to trim their eyes or give them a vaccine or it's like because they're fuzzy you ever seen there's like a they got long horns and it's like a fuzzy cow yes it's like selling at tj maxx okay like you'll yes, see them at, yes you'll see them a lot of R &R, AFR, <laughs> whatever this place is rbo or abo <laughs> or whatever places you can rent there that's what they look like uh wow well i just i'm just fascinated by that well i'm glad you got I so like much being, out of it i like being outdoors <laughs> I cleared a bunch of land, the back 40. I call it the back 40. You actually have a back 40. And it's a beautiful piece of property, and it's fun to just, you know, get the, get the Jeeps out, cruise around. My main yard work growing up was raking. We had, like, my mom liked a yard, but she also liked it forested. And we had, like, three acres. So it was, like, grass all around trees, so you can't let all the leaves just yeah, stay on it kill the grass but just we got 25 cents a bag me and my brothers hey, i got two sisters as well that's, that's good lounge but uh yeah that was that was my main job and then when i did get to ride the mower around i just remember <laughs> crashing it because i like a big spider some kind of garden oh, spider. Yeah. Oh, sorry mike a big spider like kind of landed right on me and i just didn't know what to do and i hopped off the lawnmower and just like <laughs> ran right into a tree so that was my back into more spiders <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably uh okay i'm like the biggest tequila little time stand ever I feel like I'm hey, well documented. Hey, the grade got to four. <laughs> I know. It took a long time. I know. I, I, I'm pumped, though. I am 
I, I was worried because I was like, okay, I ride so hard for this song. And I, I, my gift, I say it often on the channel, is like I can torpedo any song. I got, I got the most, the way you can hear a song and be like, I know that's a hit. Mm. I can hear a song and think, I know that's a hit, but I'm always wrong. Um, so I was relieved. I would, it, call, I would call Tequila a little time. It wasn't number one, but I think it was a hit. We play it live. Uh, one of my favorite Tequila Little Time moments I've had was just that a uh, couple weeks ago. We went to uh, Cabo San Lucas and went to the original Cabo Wabo. And I just walked in there, you know, and had the, had the hat on mm -hmm. and just kind of, mm -hmm. there wasn't one too many people. Guess what they played? Oh, yeah. Tequila. And the manager <laughs> came by and goes, Great song. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, but what I love about Tequila Time, it makes you happy. It makes you want to be on the water. It makes you want to just slam a shot of chill. Tequila, you it know? makes me want to be old. It makes me want to be like sixty in Naples or something, and like and listening to. I feel like it's going to age so well. That's always what I've thought. I'm like, man, this song is going to be so fun to hear at concerts. That's for. definitely pull opposite what I thought about that when I heard the song. Really? I was like, yeah, with the pool, chicks in bikinis. Wait, I'm saying the same thing. I'm just saying it. <laughs> but not sixty. Why not? They can they can get down. I feel like when I think of people, have you ever gone on a cruise? I hope I it's still. It's not so glamorous. I hope I still look good um, <laughs> when I'm six years old. Uh, okay, I think I'm just. I have more hope for my uh, elderly future than now. No, um, I'm, I'm in good shape. I gotta do it now so I can hear Tequila Little Time when I'm sixty at the pool. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think it's gonna age really well. Look at those freaking like Crash My Playa type concerts. No, I know. Um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely in for the long haul. Uh, okay. You did good. You did good. Next next album, uh, we've got Last Night Lonely out. Yeah. Are, 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 is there a big different thing you're trying to do with this album or say with this album than, than you've been doing? There's a little more personal songs into it that are fun, mm -hmm. um, but just di different different stories and, and kind of make a, a part of, you know, really kind of, I feel these songs a little bit more than others on this record coming up. And and then there's some that are just like, you know, like fill her up. But hey, that's just straight, you know, that we are going to drink and party and have a good time. Yeah. And, and the so single line in that's so fun. Too. Yeah, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to be like, you know, this, this album's fair from the heart and very, you know, artistic. And, you know, I've always had artistic side. I don't want to do that. <laughs> like it's like sound like me. Um, well, but I, I mean, I don't want to lose the, the honky tonk. That's this. I always say that's why I'm still here. Were you scared? I mean, would... it's always scary. I, my most anxiety is making records. Really? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the worst. And and social media just, you know, are they gonna like me? Because everybody's got a damn opinion now. Mm -hmm. It's not like you go to Tower Records, because I'm still from the Tower Records, the CD stores, you put the headphones on, and we can listen. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't like that record, well, you know what? You couldn't really tell anybody. Yeah. Think about it. I'm going to go to a local newspaper and tell them how much I hate this artist <laughs> and his music. But no, they can just do that right now. Who would do that? Who um. would do such a thing? <laughs> but I'm, I'm just saying, it's everywhere. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, you really couldn't do that. And I don't know why I brought this up because I was talking about this the other day, but uh, it's just funny. But, you know, it, it, it is, you know, we're all, you know, we're all, we just talked about before we started, you know, the, the commenters and, and the, the naysayers and the, but it's just like, it's always been that way. We just now can see it. Yeah. You know, it's just right there and it's shared like your fans will be like, yo, what they saying right here? Like, well, you know what? It all goes back to like 2000, early 2000 rap. Haters are going to hate, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I weirdly, it's funny because I weirdly relate, even though I, I feel like a lot of people think of me as the person doing the hating. It's like, I certainly have a lot of people that well, don't you guys, like. You got to step out and, and give your opinion as a critic because what, you know, if you say everything is good, well, I mean, they're not, everything's not good. Everything is not good. And I'm never trying to be mean. I just want to say what everyone thinks when they're by themselves in the shower. I, I'm not I'm like I'm not tagging everybody and trying to like maliciously send people after them. I'm just I'm just trying to stay a fan that is interacting with other fans and as if the artist weren't there and could never see it, just be like, hey, what do y'all think of the record? This is what I think mm -hmm. of the record. Um, but I, I get it too, because there's a ton of people, like a lot of fan bases that say, you're just like spreading hate, uh, like you tear down other people and you it's so hard to not get gaslit by that mm -hmm. and be like, no. No, no. I like this. 
<laughs> this actually is good. It actually introduces a lot of people to music. I'm actually open-minded, but it's hard to keep your, I, I'm just saying I, there, as you've spoken about releasing music, I'm like, there's weird things that are similar about making videos where you make one, it could flop, then you just have to make another. And it's yeah. like a never ending machine that just demands attention. Yeah. And you know, for me, it's like, I got a lot of employees now. I got a lot of people that care about me. I got a lot of people that want to see this go all the way to arena. So our, anybody's our goals arena. I mean, hell, we're almost there. And you know, sometimes you don't get strapped to a rocket ship and go all the way to the mm -hmm. top, you know, and I'd rather be the steam engine that I claim. We always, choo -choo 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 -choo. here we go. We're coming back another record. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Fuck all the haters. Let's get some things more. <laughs> and, uh, and it, so that's where we're at. And you, you think about, you know, I've gone so far and we got to do this. And I wrote some songs on the sex record and I cut a lot of outside songs too, just because, we were so busy last year, like coming out of the pandemic. We were just like, bam, 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 bam. I mean, everybody was. And uh, and I've cut a lot of great outside songs on a, a past records from California Sunrise, The Heart of Medication. So my songwriter guys are like, oh, man, party. We'll get, we'll get a cut party. Like, mm -hmm. So this, I get a lot, listen to a lot of songs. I think every artist should do, unless you really want to just write all your stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that, too, because I really want to write all my stuff. But this song's really good, and they want me to sing it, so mm -hmm. I'm going to sing that. And you just never know what, you know, Jason Aldean, Brooks and Dunn, George Strait, Alan, I mean, I mean, they all cut outside songs, and they've all written great songs. Right. So, Alan, though, has written 27 of his singles by himself. Oh, I know. He's a beast. <laughs> That's insane. He's a beast. I was like, wow, 27 solo rights. That's why he's next. And with his catalog, you're like, that is an ungodly amount He's of next, in, next to the Beatles in New York of the songwriter. I then forget what like songwriter like hall of fame is in new york but alan's like right next to mm -hmm. lennon and mccarthy and that's like, pretty pretty cool uh but uh he also didn't write five o'clock somewhere well, lennon and mccarthy sorry i'm just processing this M mccartney because i was McCarthy, like yeah. i was like why am i going into like weird russian <laughs> um like mccarthyism lennon. um i was like okay oh. i was like what does he lennon mean and lennon mccarthy. and mccarthy mccarthy <laughs> I was thinking, I just said the Beatles. I know, Beatles. I know. I know, sorry, I went into and that I history love, place. I love Paul McCartney. I just said McCarthy. <laughs> and I bet he's been called McCarthy before. Oh, I'm sure. 100%. I was just, That's an easy mistake. I got both wrong in my head. It was just strange. Um, yeah, dude. But he, some of these songs from the next year I've had on for two years. I had on hold for two years. Was it different making an album Married? <laughs> no, because Summer likes all the heartbreak song. And, like, she didn't, I mean, a lot of her songs that she likes have kind of have reminiscing songs or, like, moving on songs and so you know i love and like one of my favorite artists miranda you know oh yeah she's always like i love sad songs you know, regardless of how happy i am and what we all want that yes. we all want to hear it carousel on her new album i'm obsessed with that song it's this whole story of like a tightrope walker and a trapeze artist and uh whenever she hears the carousel it reminds her of him mm. and i'm like I just want a music, uh, there's no way I think it could be a hit, but I want a music video for it so bad. I want someone to make an expensive ass music video with like <laughs> 80s circus performers and yeah. Hey, videos, videos are own animals, animal, pff, I'm, <clears throat> can I have a, can you yeah, have yeah, another yeah. beer, man, please? please? <laughs> you know, like, you know, I'm saying all these, these wrong words because I, you know, I only no, have no, one no, beer. No. What the hell was I saying? You were saying that I said, uh. Oh, the music videos. videos are their own like thing now. They're animals now. I mean, like the streams and maps that they'll rack up. It's like a, another. I'm just saying there was one point in my career where like music videos were not even a thing. Yeah. And then the whole YouTube and streaming thing came together where now the thing is the lyric video. Yeah. And so. Do you think they matter though? They matter. <laughs> <laughs> they ma they matter because they rack up strings, and if you don't make a lyric video, somebody's gonna make. They're a lyric getting video. a little better. I mean, I edit. I mean, I'd I rather make a cheap music video. I agree, and then have that, and have a little more. I love what Haley just did um, with uh, the whole Raised album. Haley Witters. I she, love Haley's record. Oh, it's incredible. Um, I didn't see the the video. So either. literally, she brought Harper Smith out to her love hometown. Harper. We just um, we just did a. Uh, Millen's video. Great video. She brought her out to like her hometown. I think they just kind of 
walked around. I don't know what they did for like a week, but it's like, oh, here's Haley on a picnic blanket. She's just with a guitar under a apple tree or something mm -hmm. like like lip syncing to her song and those are all the lyric videos there's one in a bar there's one with her sitting in a corn silo there's one with like it's just they found cool spots they made these videos that are basically cool locations that are well lit and i'm like wow as an editor that's my dream because now i'm like i have a visual for every single song on your album they look good yeah and you have a lyric video covered and then when I'm editing, I can just crop out the lyrics yeah. and have like these like we, nice little. We shot a full on like bar music video uh, for filler up, and it, it's going to be fun. Yeah, um, but I, I was like, man, I'm like, the loop thing is so old. But the point is that they don't watch the music video or the lyric video; they just put it on a playlist and put it on the TV and have a party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure that your lyric video goes with the party. Now that's interesting that see here's where we're different and I'm learning something is you always are thinking about the party. Why like, not? Well, I don't know. I think my experience of music is different. It's like listening to something by myself in a room or in a car and it's good to remember that's not <laughs> that's not the norm, you know? I mean, there are, there are playlists for that. There are playlists for that. But you can still have, you know, upbeat kind of I don't know. It, it, the music's music, and that's why we sit around and talk about it. Right. Because we love it. Um, but you definitely want to always be on a playlist for, you know, whether it's a country party or a house, you know, house country party. Well, they play, if you go to Texas Roadhouse, there's always, like, music videos up on, like, some big screen. that They're just playing random country songs in there. So I see what you mean. Like Swayze? Uh, like Swayze, my like favorite Swayze. song ever. <laughs> is, that, is that a song? I thought you were trolling me. No, I was talking is, about uh, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Oh. <laughs> I love Texas. I thought you were referring to uh, Zach Brown's The Controversy album after they released The Owl and people were like, this is too pop. Zach Brown dropped uh, a surprise album like the next day called The Controversy mm -hmm. and it had a song called Swayze on it with the lyric, I can't be your Tom Cruise bitch. I'm Patrick Swayze. Um, wow. And it's fascinating. Um, it's, it is, uh, in my little corners of the internet, one of the most, it's, I don't know if people, people definitely hate it. And they were like, are you okay, Zach? But they also, I think they're kind of starting to love it of being like, remember that weird era where Zach dropped a solo pop record? I mean, anyway, you walked into that. I won't make you say anything controversial about it. I don't, I don't care. I think, <laughs> I said this, artists are going to be artists. They're going to they're gonna do something they think they might be awesome at a time. And sometimes it's not awesome. Or sometimes it, it grows on people. Sometimes you were a little ahead of the curve, and now mm -hmm. everybody's catching up to it. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that uh, Homegrown. That was a little more on a kind of a – it was a just different sound for him, but yeah. it's still one of my favorite yeah. songs he's done, and yeah. Nico Moon wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say I want to shake everybody's hand and play every show I can with any of the artists, whether they're opening up for me or I open up for them. Because we're all making music and we're all having fun. Because that's what it's about. Unless you're a devil. Because it's <laughs> like you're having fun, but you're gonna make people cry, right? Yeah. I mean, Odell, that that oh, yeah, went out you baby, your new song. It's like, damn it, you got me again. Yeah. <laughs> but she sells out arenas, so obviously people like sad music. Yeah. But how are we going to come back here? I'm lost. We're, we're just kind of ranting here. A little of everything. I asked you, I think the original thing was like, was it different making a record when you were married? Oh, and, Patrick Swayze. Oh. I, I think of Roadhouse a lot when you like having a rocking song. <laughs> I've never seen it. You haven't seen Roadhouse? I'm sorry. Oh my. What's your favorite movie? Roadhouse. Okay. No. <laughs> hey, it's one of the best. Roadhouse is one of the best because it's got all the '80s cheese. Yeah. And it's so good. Okay. And, okay. And it's got Swayze in it, and like, it's just, it's so good. I just think when you're rocking song, you're just back there getting beer bottles around you and stuff. <laughs> but whenever I hear Roadhouse, it's like Family Guy and then the real Roadhouse. Like, Roadhouse. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Oh, uh, it's um, awesome. Well, people will know. Okay, so <laughs> I just took a break and got some, uh, some prop work here. One of the things that we have DM'd about before is I had some commentary on the hats of Midland's mm. video. Uh, for Long Neck Way to Go, freaking love that song. Yeah. Um, Y'all should tour together one day. 
That we're, would we're, be, already, we're already talking about it. That would be we, so we, fun. We toured together before, but it was a little while back. It'd just be like such a little trip out west. Mm -hmm. um, but you were you. I, I learned when you told me about Mark's seventies. You were like, I don't know about Mark's hat. I was like, well, let me tell you what Mark's hat means. It's the seventies <laughs> high crown, and Mark looks he Mark looks good in any hat because he's a damn supermodel. But he has style, though. He yes. knows his hats, you know, yes. and he has that high crown. That is, it's not the po most popular thing, but it's just cool. What, like, but but then you proceeded to really, I've learned about you that you are, like, very, you like hat shape. It matters to you. Things that I don't, I don't even know really what I'm looking for. Um, I don't really know what, like, I, I what told makes you, a hat good or bad. It all comes from rodeo style. The rodeo guys make all the, the hat shape styles. And... From I like I like the team rope and then I will like that 2010 picture like my, I'd go team rope and I'm, I'm wearing my hat and they'd be like that's a stupid hat they'd be like what do you mean it's a stupid <laughs> hat I'm like this is my hat and I started learning about shapes and I, a lot of Texas guys are big in the hat shapes so then American came along and they, they make the best shapes and what's they, yours this, what is the, this? I, this is a cattleman's crease or just like the, they'll say it's John Party or you can call them with the John Party hat and they'll just send you a cattleman's crease mm -hmm. but it's respected crease. You kind of, you know, it's a look, and so it's, it's kind of flat in the front. And yeah, that. and they also they do whatever you want. American will, and great hat shapers. They'll get your face right, and it's just coming from buying those and not looking as good to going to a good hat shape. Trust me, it makes a big difference, especially in photos. So. It's not just the shape itself that's good or bad. It's the the head that it's on will determine whether or not the shape is good or bad. I mean, the, head, really... the head will determine what shape you're going to feel most comfortable in. Okay. Unless, thing. you know, the bull riders got, they got a little, I mean, a little more wide. I mean, the bull riders wear whatever they want. It kind of makes sense to me because, like, when I, my beard will, like, fully change the look of my face. Like, when I shave down, I'm sure Jordan Davis has this. You're like, oh, my gosh, my face is like a little circle. I'm not used to seeing. It, like, creates the illusion that everything's longer here. I guarantee that you would look good in that hat that you were like, I don't like Mark's hat. I bet you would look good in it. Because wow. the beard and the high crown, they did, they go a lot hmm. together. So you know things. Okay, so there's three hats in this house. None of them are mine. Um, but this is our, uh, let's do a loose review. What is this a good hat? You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? It's a three X. Okay, I don't know what that means. The higher the X, the better the quality. Um, but I mean, it's okay. I mean, dude, if that's your hat and you rock it and it looks good. Pff, rock it, man. Sure, sure. But you know, you know, not everybody, not everybody has enough confidence to spend twelve hundred dollars on a hat to get it perfectly right. That's how much hats cost. I mean, their hats can get up there. Wow. Um, not this hat. Now this feels like it's made of plastic. You know? <laughs> I don't know. It's, I, I don't know. Is this a good hat? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, it, th this this has got to be so uncomfortable. And I get, I get it kind of stays on your head, but, um, yeah, I mean, but, hey, if this is your hat, this is a good trash hat, like the pool. You know, you're not going to – if you get this wet or something and it gets deformed, you're not going to care about it. So, you know. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And that, what do you, do, what do, are these normal? These vents? Yeah. Yeah. That's normal. It's not a very good vent. Okay. Like, see, mine <laughs> kind of has, you get a little more air. Uh, and then this is our final hat. This one has a more different shape than the others. You know, I call this. No. Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris. <laughs> well, that's a, that's it's a very, good. It's very Chuck Norris. Like, if you look at. What uh, do you call this thing? That's a hat band. A hat band. Yeah. And That's, they're just decorative. Do they have some kind of practical purpose? No, they're just decorative. Okay. Um, so, if you look at mine, my hair is a mess. But see, it's genuine leather. Uh, it's 10 star. And American makes thicker like leather in, inserts around your head. And I've been riding on this, mm -hmm. like horseback and also on ATV. And it, it stays on. I mean, it's not going to stay on at 50, but yeah. it stays on 30 to 40 pretty good. 
And, and the vents are practical. They, they yeah, I yeah. never knew that. I always yeah. just figured that was like a cool. That's why. Little, that's like why Tristan Merez has these kind of like cool things too. Yeah. That was like his hats. But it it does. That's going to be a lot warmer. And right now you don't wear felt. Got it. Well, is that like a Labor Day kind of rule? Like you don't wear white after Labor. Day? I don't get the whole Labor Day thing. <laughs> okay. Like you know, I get it. If you really want to be like, no, that's just what cowboys do. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my straw hat. Wait, I was completely kidding. I was just making a reference that people say don't wear white after Labor Day. But is there a cowboy Labor Day? Yeah. What, which, what is When's it? Labor Day? Uh, August, end of August, beginning of is September. When, there was a three day weekend like in April or, or Memorial Day. Yeah, usually after Memorial Day, it's straw season. Got it. Okay. I think, I don't know. And then Labor Day. For me, I'm like, that's just like, that's just guy talking shit to you, really. I mean, in the long run. <laughs> if it's cold out, I'm gonna put my felt on. Okay, you know? okay. And sometimes if it's dressy, you know, you want to wear your black hat with your black coat or you want to, you know, you, you kind of, it makes a match. But if it's, if we're like the ACMs and the style is like, no, you got to wear a black hat. It's like, no, I don't because it's going to be really hot in Vegas. Like, and yeah. so I've been in California and I'm like, well, it's felt season in October. I better bring the felt. It's 90 degrees. You yeah. know? And I was like, oh, cowboy. I <laughs> my felt hat on. Just sweating. I was like taking it off. Like, what is a. Uh... Okay. Uh, I just lost my train of thought thinking about hats because I'm learning so no, much no, no, that no. I never. Cowboy knew. hats. Cowboy hats. Sorry. Cowboy. Did you ever wear. Have you ever done like a trucker cap? Kind of thing. Have you always been an insistent cowboy hat wearer? No, I wear. I, I still wear trucker hats and stuff. I like wear them backwards, especially when I'm wakeboarding. But I'm on like on stage and stuff. Hell no. Okay. Well, I did before, <laughs> I, but see that you know, I, I went through this phase where I didn't have a hat, and then Northern Cover I had the hat the whole time, and then I felt like I lost a piece of me when I moved to Nashville and didn't wear a hat. Then when I got the record deal. Like it really sank into like, do you want to look like this shaggy puppy your whole your whole rest of your artist like career is like, just, like long fluffy yeah. hair and then i went like to the elvis cut so i still kind of rocked that yeah you kind of poof it up but then it was hot out yeah and my i sweat i'm a sweater i don't i feel you guys and girls if you just sweat like because there ain't nothing <laughs> word you just sweat so i'd have my hair all nice get on the stage and then be all fall down i was yeah. like all right this i'm going back to that yeah and i fought my label for a long time but when that first Single art came out of head over boots, and I had a hat on. You're like, heck yeah, this one hit, my, and I had the my, hat on. Bobby Young from Capitol Records, my head ready to go. It all changed when he put his hat on, man. Mm. As, as I told you. I mean, I used to do, I mean, early on when I wrote for like Entertainment Weekly and stuff, I remember talking to a few publicists about, I won't say who, but uh, they would say things like, oh, we really, we can't get this guy to take his cowboy hat off, and we just feel that. You know, it's hard for like women to connect when you can't see his eyes as well. There was a lot of, I was like, who knew? Uh, oh. It's a thing I never would have thought about. And I was oh, like, man. so you have like, there's literally a team of people that are kind of gossiping about their own artists. To me, a journalist being like, well, once he takes his hat off, maybe he'll happen. And I was like, that was just interesting to me. I was like, I didn't know these types of discussions. Well, I came in and I was like, let's just do it all. Like, oh, you want the hat off? Cool, let's just get my hair nice and done, give me a jacket, give me something looking good. Like the next album shoot we did, I got some some rock in the hair. And, uh -huh. and even in last Does time, your wife like, do your hair? No. <laughs> uh, my girl Lindsay does my hair. Okay. Because <laughs> you want your hair looked after on a set because I can do my hair, but I ain't going to guarantee what it's going to do. Yeah. You know, it might be like, yeah. you know, coming down. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But for the most part, I do, I do my hair. I will. I need to get a haircut really bad. <laughs> That's what I like, took my hat. I was like, damn, my hair looks. It's okay. It's okay. But also, I want people to know I still have hair. You know, because I, I got friends that they, you know, I, it, it sucks losing. It sucks losing your hair. Well, now is when we're gonna switch to an ad integration for keeps. <laughs> All um, right. Yeah. <laughs> they are. They are sponsored. By, uh, they are sponsored. Hair growth shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. But I, I feel like no artist should be held back by one look. And I, I always kind of stood for that. It's like, well, 
you're an artist, man. You want to look different. I was like, look at Brad Pitt. Not that I say I look like Brad Pitt. I wish I did, but dude can transform himself into anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I feel like an artist, like if you want to, on a very minor, minor scale, from like an actor, if you want to have one shot with you know, your hair out, or you want to do like a trucker cap, yeah. you know, and go with the style. That's fine. For me on stage, I will always have a hat on, mm-hmm. and I have a cowboy hat, and my band will, because I, I still believe in dressing up. Yeah, like the part, the look, the sound. There's something important about that to me, and I think the showmanship. Yeah, and and now the cowboy hat kind of it's getting a low percentage. Yeah, now it's just hats, like ball caps, and there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that, dude. Not everybody's a cowboy. Not everybody wants to be a cowboy, and I feel like that is a good thing because you don't, you shouldn't necessarily have to be a country singer and oh, I just go put my hat on. You know, my cowboy hat. I was a columnist for the Guardian. When they launched out of London, they launched a U.S. bureau in New York, and I was there. There, they wanted writers that covered super American things. So they had like a food writer doing a barbecue tour, and they were like, "We want you to write about country music." And one of the first, they were they were almost like on safari um, about like looking at the weird country fans. They were like, "Grady, can you do an article on cowboy hats?" And I was like, "Well, I don't know what you really want me to say. They're not." This was in 2014. I was like. They're kind of like not the most stylish thing right now. I mean, they still exist, but it's way more about a ball cap right now. This was like Luke Bryan mm. and stuff. And and they were like, well, that's very interesting. We're very keen on that. <laughs> um, and I was like, so you want me to do a, an article about the demise of the cowboy hat? They're like, that would be amazing. They liked really kind of trolly stories like that that might make Americans mad. I mean, in some ways, it was like the best column I ever could have had because pretty cool. they didn't know anything. Yeah. Like every other place I've ever worked for, I'm like, if I wanted to write something negative about a Zach Brown album or something, they'd be like, well, we can soften this. Or what if we did a top 10 list of your favorite of his songs? And they knew nothing. And I would just turn in a column and they would press publish. And wow. I mean, it was really a unique, good setup. But sometimes they would force my hand and be like, no, we want this weird article about cowboy hats. But if I'd only had known, you could have. Uh, well, I mean, you could have gotten now, now, got now when we go fast forward to 2022, it's hats, ball caps are a thing, but there's also stylish hats. Are yeah. Like, whereas, like, it may not be the cowboy, or, like I said, not everybody's, you know, cowboy, but they can wear, like, a cool hat, yes. like Clint Eastwood style, yeah. you know, and I remember still through the earlier years of my friends artists, my friends as artists, they went through the pilgrim stage where everybody said they looked like a pilgrim Oh yeah, because they had the flat, the flat brim and then the beard is like, he looks like a pilgrim. I was like, well, suspenders and a but, but, yeah, oh, yeah, and then the, the little, the Hey guys, what, what was that song? Hey, hey, home, limited. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they look all look. They definitely, I think they still look like pilgrims. Yeah. <laughs> so show me family. But it changed everything. Yeah. And it, and it, it, I mean, put the hat shapers game and boutique hats into a whole other world. Yeah. And so that's why I think it's kind of fascinating and cool that we can all express ourselves through Western wear or stylish hats like it was back in. The early 1900s, you know, everybody, you went, you, everybody had a hat. Well, I think I don't know how everybody dressed in a three piece suit all the time oh, in like yeah. August. Yeah. <laughs> I was with no air conditioning. Well, I didn't have as good they deodorant, so it was just locking tougher, it in. Way tougher back in the day. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I think it's cool though because like something Garth said, it's in Ken Burns, like in encyclopedia thing about the history of country music. He has this whole section on Garth and something that, Garth says in there is about, you know, he wanted people to understand that country was cool instead of let's change all our imaging to look more like the rest of the music industry. Mm. Let's like, we just need to be confident that we're already cool and people will want to come to you. Can we, at this right moment, can we bring up the Garth Brooks sitting on the fence with his hat and his guitar and his, his Nikes? (laughs) <laughs> have you seen this uh, it was like we well, got a rodeo at, at night but, or you got a ball right now and, no is this new no oh, okay uh, this dude, is like an old, knows exactly what i'm talking about uh, i don't <laughs> I, 
I'm sorry for not knowing it well. I, my Garth knowledge really is like I'm extensively informed about Chris Gaines. I love Garth's first Facebook video where he says cool stuff, slick stuff, neat stuff. Um, uh, but I'm sorry for not knowing this. Oh, you got to pull it. It's, it's, but <laughs> I think it was him trying to reach out like, look, I don't have to wear cowboy boots all the time. I'm more of these badass. I don't know if they were Velcro. I might have been Velcro. <laughs> I don't know, but they're bright. Well, I'm making the opposite point. I'm saying that like another guy, <laughs> another guy that came out and wasn't like super country looking, but was like a sensation was Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, mullet and then like high tops. Oh, I guess I've never looked. These are like such dad shoes now. Like that feels yeah, like long shoes. But still, when you got dunk, you know? <laughs> but still, like the point is, like he was like. <laughs> Probably at the time, I was like, man, what's he doing? What's he doing wearing, like, Nikes? Yeah. I don't know. But I think, well, I was making the point, though, of, like, it's cool that right now, fashion-wise at least, I feel like country, musically, stylishly, just the industry at large, and that's kind of how I think of it, even though you're all individuals, it's kind of in a good spot of, like, remembering that, oh, our, diff our thing that makes us different is cool. Uh, and I feel like that's, it makes me very happy to see whether it's you, Midland, Ian Munsick, like sort of that kind of Western flavor into the mix. Cause I don't know, it's, I, I'm getting everything I ever wanted. Like from a decade ago, being the guy whining about bro country, I'm like, man, I just feel like we have variety again. And it's very exciting. There is, I think country music is in a great spot. And I think everybody that paved the way with different influences got us to where we are right now. Yeah. Even, I mean, Jason Aldean, when uh, Back Road Anthem came out, I think that's the title, right? Yep. Dirt, Road, Dirt Road Anthem. Dude, look at me messing up everything. That's no, fine. But Dirt Road Anthem, like, it changed everything, and it was, like, a big deal at the time because mm -hmm. there was, you know, there was kind of like a, wasn't even really rapping, but it was just different. <laughs> but look where that brought us, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's just, we're at a cool spot, and I, it always goes back to, an artist should never like feel bad about taking an influence and, and making it into a country song. Cause you never know. It may be great. It may be okay. It may be not that great, but you still brought something in and made it yours and, yeah. and, and from something you like. So I, I try not, like I said, I want to play with everybody. I want to shake everybody's hand and just, we're all here for the love of music. So I want to end off with, with what you love in music right now. What is like, do you find yourself continually saying over the past year, like, you got to check out this album and send in all your friends the same way? Or is there just one you keep coming back to? What is, who do you love and who do you think people should be listening to? Oh, I mean, I, I, I listen to uh, Randall, Randall's King record pretty good. Hey, absolutely. And I like going back to that, Midlands, Midlands got great stuff on the this next record but they're they're very like their band they're writing for their band and yeah. i think that's cool and they don't let it anything get in their way i think i like have you heard cameron sing i know it's cameron because it's like hey he sometimes oh, has that rock saturday story. night yeah and it's just cool like i i, I, keep, I kept going back I'm like man it's just cool but it's so cameron um so <laughs> I just bashed that song literally yesterday on the channel. Well, um, it's so, fine. <laughs> so I'm, it's I'm, just, I'm saying it for my own. Uh, I'm like, you guys know. But I should have just let the moment pass. I, it's fine. <laughs> but I'm just saying his his influence is coming out. Yeah. Regardless, like I said, good, bad, whatever <laughs> people think, he was still influenced by that. Totally. And it it is what it is. Um, and then... I, that, I love was, that record, though. I mean, no, that's, uh, you can put it on and let it play. I mean, it's... It, but where's well, I left my phone in truck because I was being professional. It's okay. I, I was just wondering if there's like so, I'm like I didn't know if you had like some Larry soul Fleet. song. I mean like, Larry Fleet. Oh, yeah. I mean that's the country soul right there. I mean, I think he's great. Um, Any non-country? Do you have just like? I find it very refreshing sometimes to be like, okay, I'm off the clock. Let's listen to. I love this TikTok little punk kid named Jaden um, that records with Travis Barker and stuff like that. I haven't heard his stuff. <laughs> it's very, very like angry, seventeen-year-old yeah. angsty pop punk. Uh, I'm, it's back. It's back. Oh no, but it's like a different. It's not fast. It's like it's like all kind of funky. Uh, some uh, like Machine some Gun it. Kelly. Yes. I think, I think he found he was like rapper to pop punk to punk, and and it's, now it's all together. Yeah. And I I, I hit the Machine Gun Kelly and kind of just seeing as like, you know, he's like this big rock star guy now and like his doing cool anything i think 
I think Travis Barker himself is an artist. Yeah. That just sure. plays he like he picks he knows what he's doing and he, he picks where his drums are gonna really shine and that I, so anything with Travis I'm always like, I gotta listen to Travis yeah. Barker. And, man, I, I listen to a lot of throwback stuff too. Mm-hmm. And like I I don't know, I I kinda listen to everything. But I can't tell you pinpoint exactly without my phone. <laughs> okay, okay. Like, if I have my phone, I'm like, yeah, I've been listening to this, I've been listening to this. And, and look, my wife, she got me into <laughs> this channel on Pandora. It's called Dinner Jazz. And literally. It's the most married thing I've ever heard. Well, she was a dude. <laughs> but it's nice because it's just music. Yeah. And it's just kind of subtle to where you're not sitting around and be like, that's a shitty song. Yeah. And like it's it's on it's on it's on this playlist. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it kind of takes the judgmental part away. Yeah. But it's still you'll find yourself you'll find yourself judging a jazz song like this is not cool. Mm-hmm. Next song. <laughs> <laughs> so like we can say whatever we want, but you're still gonna be like this ain't even a good jazz song. Yeah. And there's no lyrics. I mean, I yeah, I can't edit to. I can't have any words happening if, like, even in the background, quietly, if I'm editing a video. It's just got to be, I mean, generally, it's got to be no music, but, like, that's the only thing I can kind of listen to. Hey, maybe you throw some dinner jazz up there. Should that be behind us this entire interview? Just, like, light dinner <laughs> jazz. <laughs> that's hey, the, you uh, might be surprised. You might like it. But I, I listen to so much stuff, so I love music and um, love music enough to even blatantly come out and say yes i listen to dinner jazz hell yeah <laughs> well dude on that note of of repping dinner jazz if you got anything you want to like promote or or tell tell the people you're welcome to just choose any camera uh preferably this right one and and hawk it but i'd like to uh thank everybody that is talking about country music like yourself and like like you guys are behind us not on camera and 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 making it I think of social media to where it's it's important. It's uh, it, it's something fun, and I think it's 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 just something that's generating a lot of whatever reaction or whatever you guys say inside the <laughs> analytics of the app or whatever <laughs> that I don't go into. But it's fun, and, and it I think it keeps artists on their toes too because you, you can. You want to be liked by everybody. Well, now we got all these blogs and, and stuff, and, and you want to just kind of, I don't know. Some artists can be like, no, I'm, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's cool just because it shows the love of music, and it shows how far people go to set up cameras and lights and talk about music and without being on the radio. And I think that's pretty important. It's going to help new artists out. It's going to help people that don't have record deals out, and, it, and it's just – everything and you know country radio i still think is a strong thing you need country radio and you'll have help from social media too but it's definitely radio is strong too um so thank you country radio i'm saying i'm a thank yous right now like, like, well it's very nice of you i thought you were gonna promote your tour uh but i'm uh, no, i'm not done yet i'm not done yet i still gotta have a beer and uh come see me on the ain't always a cowboy tour with laney wilson and Haley witters Two of my favorite oh, so people, fun. artists, they're this I, I describe them. Well, first of all, when I I came up with they ain't always a cowboy, I was like, well, me and Mel did, but we're like, this is it. Then they tried to tell us, well, that song's dated. I was like, well, you're dated, no, your analytic <laughs> things that you do. Well, this is new. I don't know if analytics the word, but I'm looking for like testing and call out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that what it means? That's what it means, right? Sure. Well, you, well, I don't know. I don't know if you're talking about. I don't know what analytics. Oh, now he's going into Grady Land. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is just like what's working now. What's I see. Not, you know, that's there's a lot of that. But like, well, no, we're gonna make it work. And I'm on. I was like, I want Laney and I want Haley to come out with me. Yeah. And like, literally, they're the only artists we asked, and they both said yes. So I was like, yes. hell, dreams do come true. You're all very if you build it. They will come. Fun people. Yeah, no, I mean, we had uh, a weekend in Texas where we played together at the same, the Whitewater Amphitheater, and we had a blast. Nice. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. Well, I'm excited. I've never I've never gotten to see any of you live. And so, well, I guess you come to the show, pick one out. I know. I'm, I'm, I'll try. <laughs> I want to. Got, I'm, like, really excited. We got excited a, Nashville, a Nashville one in October. You all should come back for that. It'd be fun. Okay. It's at, it's at uh, Ascend. And uh, so, yeah, check out a tour. And... Uh, um, my new album is hopefully coming out in September. Okay. 
I can't give a date because I don't want to be like, well, it's not then. And if it comes out earlier, nobody can complain. That's why I tried to tell Mel. Mel was like, your publicist said don't talk about when the album's coming out. I was like, why? I mean, it's I got to be done with it June 15th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I know there's going to be somewhere around there. But it's coming out this summer. So. so you're about to have to do the thing where have you had to play it for the label yet and stuff? No, we got to get vocals in. I'm going vocals tomorrow and Thursday. That just sounds – that just seems like the most uncomfortable thing to me, to have to to sit in a room and just play it and be like, I hope you like it. Is it weird? No, because I know they're going to like it. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we go to Key West next week to finish the, the album. Okay. We, we got Jimmy Bo's studio down there. And the allergies aren't as bad in Key West. I believe it. I don't know if <laughs> you're pretty bad the here. dandelions floating around. It's like Allegra. And oh, there's, there's Zyrtec floating around flow here. Nays, yeah. Flow nays and Zyrtec, yes. So anyway, random thoughts. Give me a beer and a half. I'm like, well, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on to the channel. It really is cool of you. And uh, I, I look forward to hearing all the rest of this new music. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for you guys to hear it. And uh, thanks for being so close to my house. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank this Airbnb. Yeah, I mean, it's literally, this is part of my route.